In this video presentation, we're going to install a dry line box into a dry line wall, often called a stud or hollow partition wall out on site. These are skills required at our EAL Level 2 Electrical Diploma. Simply going to either cut in a two game box, as the one that's installed at the moment, or a one game box under the instruction of your tutor. We're going to be using old school, old fashioned pad saw. It doesn't mean that our college hasn't got the ability to use a multi-tool. However, the assessment requires us to use a pad saw. And this video will look at the skills required in order to use a pad saw to cut the box into a dry line wall. Also during this assessment, we're gonna to need to make sure we wear a dust mask, a pair of safety goggles, and a pair of gloves in order that we comply with the requirements of the EAL assessment. We're gonna bring the camera in nice and close, and I'm gonna show you how I mark out and ensure that no studs are present behind the wall. It's easy to see at the minute that we have other fixtures such as wood and metal supports holding the frame up. However, in the real world, when faced with just a plaster wall, you're unaware of where those studs are, and we'll look at a technique to ensure that we don't hit those studs. Let's bring the camera and have a look what we're going to do next. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to cut in a one gang dry lined box, okay, the two gangs above it. Wouldn't matter, exactly the same technique, whichever we're installing. And I like to leave at least 50 mil gap between the boxes of which we're cutting into our wall. So if I position it on like so, Okay, and I'm just gonna draw around that box. Hopefully I've got it reasonably level. And I'm just gonna draw around that box using my permanent pen. Like so. Come around. And hopefully, I've got a line up there as well. We got a box like so. So we're ready for the next stage. So with the outline of my box now marked out onto my wall, it's not just a case of now rapidly going in with the pad saw and cutting out this shape. We don't know if there's any timber or metal frame behind here. Okay, so we need to prove that. I'm gonna take my braddle and I'm just gonna punch a few little holes in there. If I go for the corner, I go for the other corner, take the corners out, so, like so. And my, in this case, braddle goes all the way in. We're in a good position, and I'm going to go in the center as well. So by confirming that my braddle goes all the way, and I know in these areas here, there is no wood or metal stud behind it. However, the flaps on the boxes themselves actually protrude out in order to grasp onto the plasterboard in order to hold the box in position. So it could be that there is a metal or wood stud here, a metal or wood stud here. So therefore the flaps wouldn't open out on one side or both and likely to be that narrow, but on one side. So just to confirm that, I take my braddle and I push it into the side. And I push it into this side, meaning there's two very small holes left for the customer. That's not a problem. If I was to cut this out and find it was adjacent to a piece of wood or metal stud here, I wouldn't actually be able to fit my box. So two small holes will not need much redecoration compared to cutting out a hole and finding that I can't actually install the side flaps because there is actually a stud in the way. We're ready to use the pad saw next. So I've got my PPE on and I'm now ready to cut out the hole with my pad saw. I'm gonna run it round just on the outside of the line all the way round so in order that my box will be nice and secure inside the cut hole. However, if I was to come slightly on the inside, what I often find is that the box won't go in and I end up having to trim the inner edge. On site, I've used a knife before, usually a standing knife rather than this style of fixed blade knife, just to run round the line as well, where my wall is painted. So in order to stop the paint chipping away, I've also run round with a knife. There's no need and I'm not requiring you to do this at college. So it's pad saw next. I'm gonna try and stay out the way as best I can as I cut round. I'm just gonna jam it into the first hole. So I've made a little hole there, so I'm just gonna jam my pad saw in, and then I'm gonna cut round the outside of the marked line of the actual box itself. So 
So now there's the moment of truth. I just pop in my two flaps into the inside of the box itself. I push my box into position. It fits in there nice and snugly. And then just pop my flaps in, pull them forward, pull them forward, and I'm ready there for an electrical accessory. I hope this video has been some help.